In this video, we're going to talk about how to graph the tangent and cotangent functions, and we're also going to talk about how to do some transformations of these two functions, including vertical stretch and shrink, also horizontal stretch and shrink, also known as period change, and we'll also talk about a phase shift or a horizontal translation. So let's get started. First of all, with the graphs of the functions of tangent and cotangent, we'll encounter what's called vertical asymptotes. A vertical asymptote is just a vertical line that the graph approaches but does not intersect. What happens is the x values get closer and closer to the line, but the function values increase or decrease without bound, and it makes it look like the graph is either running straight up the vertical asymptote or straight down. Asymptotes occur wherever a function has undefined values, and we know that, co that tangent has undefined values at the odd pi over 2s, and we know that cotangent has undefined values at the whole pi's. Now let's see if we can generate our own graph of the tangent function using our calculators to uh, generate some values here. So we'll start at 0 degrees and we'll put down every 15 degrees until we get to 75. And when we get to 75, instead of going 15 more degrees, which would put us all the way at 90, let's just go 10 more degrees and then kind of sneak up on the 90 degree mark. And using our calculators, we know the tangent of 0 degrees is 0, tangent of 15 degrees on the calculator is 0 0.27. No sense keeping a whole bunch of decimal places. 2 is really more than we need because our y-axis is not that exact. And then 30 degrees, the calculator says 0.58. 45 degrees is 1. Now that's a, whole, a nice whole number, and 45 degrees is going to be easy to find on the x-axis, and 1 is easy to find on the y-axis, so that's like a nice guideline point for us. And then 60 degrees has a tangent of 1.73, 75 degrees, 3.73, 85 degrees, 11.4, then 57.3, and wow, look how much it jumped in just 4 degrees. It really jumped on up there. And then add another 9 tenths of a degree, and the tangent of 89.9 .9 is 573. So wow, that y value really gets large. And now let's label our axes. So I'm really only going to count up to 5 here. Um, you could do more, but this will be really enough for us to get the shape of it. And I've gone ahead and put on the x-axis pi over 4, which of course is 45 degrees, and pi over 2, which is 90 degrees, and we know the tangent of pi over 2 is undefined, so that's going to cause an asymptote on our graph. And now using the fact that 0 degrees has a tangent of 0, I'll put a dot here at the origin, and the tangent of pi over 4 is 1, so I'll put a dot here at 1, like that. And I need one more um, point. So the only other one that really fits on my y-axis is the 3.73. So it's 75 degrees, which is about 2 thirds of the way between uh, pi over 4 and pi over 2. About right here, 3 pi or 3.73, and so that's going to make us draw that curve up like that. Okay, now we need the other half of the curve, so let's come in here and change all these angles to negative. But there's no need to recalculate all these values because now if all of these are, are quadrant 4 angles, then all of these tangent values are negative, and uh, what's going to happen is every y value that was positive here is going to be negative as we go down the left side. Let's start by putting an asymptote at negative pi over 2 and then a mark at negative 1 for the negative pi over 4 and then a negative 3.73 and you can see that that side just goes down the same way the right one went up. And this is called one branch of the tangent function, or it is one period as well. And you can see that the first branch goes through the origin. That is important to remember that the tangent function goes through the origin. Let's draw another branch. So it's 
pi radians from asymptote to asymptote. So if you're at a half pi and you add one pi, that's going to put you at three pi over two. So there's going to be an asymptote there. So now what you're going to do is put yourself a mark halfway between the two asymptotes. If this is a half pi and this is three halves pi, right in the middle would be two halves pi or just simply one pi. And then we put these little quarter marks here. Those are helpful because that's where the graph is going to equal positive one and negative one like it did over here. So now positive one and negative one and just let the graph come from up high, go through the one, through the pi mark, and then down the left side. Like that. Okay, now we need one more period. So let's draw one back here. So negative pi over two minus a whole pi would put us at negative three pi over two. And halfway in between negative one half pi and negative three halves pi is negative one pi. So our graph is gonna go through this center mark but we need quarter marks here to be where the negative one and the positive one go, like that. And then it's going to go from high up on the right through these marks and down the left. And that is three branches or three periods of the tangent function. Now let's see if we can analyze these a little bit. First of all, let's describe where the asymptotes are negative 3 pi over 2, negative 1 pi over 2, positive 1, positive 3. The asymptotes are occurring at the odd pi over 2's. Now you may remember from a previous lesson we found out that to write odd in math notation when you're letting n be an integer, the way to say odd is to say 2n plus 1. So this says every odd pi over 2 where n is any integer and the domain um, or sorry, the period is pi radians because it's pi radians from one asymptote to the next or 180 degrees. And the domain is every x value where we don't see an asymptote. So the domain is all x's such that x is not equal to an odd pi over 2. And then the range, you may remember from chapter one, we talked about how range um, is all the y values and we said tangent can have any value. So the range is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Or notice that's the lowest y to the highest y. Every y value is included from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then the x-intercepts, look, they're at negative one, zero, positive one, or negative one pi, zero, positive one pi. And so the x-intercepts are occurring at n pi, where n is any integer, but we've already said that up here. And the y equals tangent x graph has no amplitude, because amplitude implies minimum and maximum values like we saw on the sine and cosine functions, but we don't see that same type of oscillating behavior with tangent. And so tangent has no amplitude to speak of. But we can get somewhat of a pattern. Notice that tangent is high on the right side and low on the left. All right, and now I'm gonna show you how to draw your own tangent function. To draw your own tangent function, the best thing to do is to start by drawing the first two asymptotes which occur to the left of the y-axis and to the right of the y-axis. So I've put asymptotes at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 and I know the graph is going to go through the origin. Remember tangent goes through the origin. So and I also know that I need these quarter marks and I need to label at least a 1 on the y-axis. So at the right quarter mark, it's high, and at the, low at the left quarter mark, it's low. Remember, tangent is high on the right, low on the left. And so now our tangent graph is going to come right here, go through that quarter mark, through the center, and through the left quarter mark, and down the left asymptote. And that is the principal branch of the tangent function. But we were asked to draw three, so let's draw another asymptote out here. Now you remember, they're pi radians apart, so a half pi plus a whole pi gives you three halves pi. 
And then right here in the center is going to be one pi. And then you're going to put your two quarter marks here. And remember, tangent is high on the right, low on the left. And then connect the dots. Come from up high along the right asymptote through the quarter mark, through the center, and the left quarter mark, and then down the left side. Okay, we need to do one more. Let's come back to this side and do it. So negative pi over 2 minus a pi puts us at negative 3 pi over 2. Put your mark in the center and your quarter marks on both sides. And then you've got a high mark on the right, a low mark on the left, and connect the dots. And there's our third branch of the tangent function. And that's it. Now you're going to want to be able to draw this by heart because every now and then you need to sketch a tangent function to see what's going on with the problem. Um, so it'll be helpful if you'll practice graphing this so that you can sketch one off anytime you need to. Now when we get ready to do the cotangent, it's helpful to remember that uh, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So it's going to help us out to figure out what reciprocals are on the graph. The reciprocal of undefined, you know, undefined has zero on the bottom. So the reciprocal of that would be zero, where zero is on the top. And that means that wherever tangent had an asymptote, cotangent will have an x-intercept. See, undefined and zero are reciprocals because undefined has zero on the bottom, and zero, of course, has zero on the top. And if undefined means an asymptote for the graph and zero means an x-intercept, then wherever tangent had an asymptote, cotangent will have an x-intercept. And the other way around, the reciprocal of zero is undefined. So wherever tangent had an x-intercept, cotangent will have an asymptote. And let's also remember that the reciprocal of one is one. And the reciprocal of a large number is going to be a small number with the same sign. Think about a large number like, say, a thousand. Well, the reciprocal would be one over a thousand, which is 0 0.001. So that's a very small number, but it's still the same sign that it was. And let's also remember that the reciprocal of a small number is a large number with the same sign. And that will help us as we go forward and try to draw the graph of the cotangent function. Now to graph the cotangent, it is very helpful if first you will draw yourself a tangent function. So what I've done is I've put asymptotes at every odd pi over 2 and I've lightly sketched in the tangent function. You can see. And I even have a little leftover half of a tangent function, tangent branch right here. Now the first thing we know is that everything that was an asymptote on the tangent function is going to be an x-intercept on the cotangent function. And everything that was an x-intercept on the tangent is going to become an asymptote on the cotangent. So right now what I'm doing is erasing all of the old asymptotes and drawing in new asymptotes where tangent has x-intercepts. And I don't know if you can see it very well, but the y-axis itself should be an asymptote. Okay, now we need to remember that the reciprocal of 1 is 1, and the reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. So each of these places where tangent hits 1, cotangent will also hit 1. And where tangent hits negative 1, cotangent will also hit negative 1. Okay, now, here is an asymptote, and here is an asymptote, and now you can probably see that the curve is going to connect like this. Now, it's going to do that because this is a small positive number, so its reciprocal will be a large positive number. These are large positive numbers, so their reciprocals will be small positive numbers. These are large negative numbers. So their reciprocals will be small negative numbers, and then so on. This is 
a small negative number. These are all small negatives. So their reciprocals will be large negative numbers. And that's how the first branch looks. We can repeat that for each additional pair of asymptotes. And that's what the cotangent function looks like. And now just to clear everything up, I'm going to erase the old tangent functions. There you go. And all that's left now is the cotangent function. Notice that it is high on the left, low on the right, just the opposite of the tangent function. It does not go through the origin because the origin, because the y-axis is one of its asymptotes. Okay, now notice that the asymptotes are occurring at 0, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and so the asymptotes are occurring at n pi. The period is how far it is from one asymptote to the next, so that's going to be 1 pi. And the domain is every x value except where we have asymptotes, so that's going to be any x such that x is not equal to n pi, and the range is just like the tangent range was all real numbers, cotangent range is the same thing, any number can be a cotangent, so negative infinity to positive infinity, and the x-intercepts are occurring now where tangent had asymptotes, so this, these are going to occur at all the odd pi over 2's. And now cotangent x, just like tangent x, has no amplitude. And let's finally note that the pattern is high on the left and low on the right. High on the left, low on the right. Okay, now we're going to practice drawing the cotangent function. Um, it's a little different from the tangent. It's just enough different to get you confused. So you need to remember that for the tangent, we had asymptotes at the odd pi over 2's, but with the cotangent, we're going to have asymptotes at the whole pi's. And the y-axis is one of those because the y-axis is 0 pi. So I'm going to go ahead and put several asymptotes at negative 1 pi, 0, positive 1 pi, and positive 2 pi. And you can see that gives me three kind of cubby holes for my graph to go in. And we use the positive 1 and the negative 1 on the y-axis, so I've drawn those in. And now I'm going to put a center mark in between each pair of asymptotes. Those are my odd pi over 2's, so negative 1 pi over 2, positive 1 pi over 2, and positive 3 pi over 2. And notice I've gone ahead and put my quarter marks in here as well. And we know that the pattern of cotangent is high on the left, low on the right. So high on the left, low on the right. Those go at the quarter marks. And the same thing here. And connect. And the same thing here. And connect. And there is three periods of cotangent. And now that we've got the graphs of tangent and cotangent kind of down a little bit, we're going to talk about graphing transformations of tangent and cotangent. So I just copied this table right out of your book. Uh, it says to graph y equals a tangent bx or a cotangent bx. We're going to follow these steps. Positive b. Okay, these only work on positive b. It says, first find the period pi over b. Now remember, when we had a cosine and sine, period was 2 pi, so the formula for finding period was 2 pi over b. But now, with tangent and cotangent, period equals pi. So to find, when, when we have a b, when b is not equal to 1, period is going to equal pi over b. Not 2 pi over b, but 1 pi over b. And that's because we're dealing with tangent and cotangent now. And the period of tangent 1x and cotangent 1x is pi. Now, you know that um, 
tangent of x has its first two asymptotes at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So to find the transformed asymptotes, take what's in the parentheses and set it equal to negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And that will give you the location of the new asymptotes. Or if you're dealing with cotangent, instead of negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, you're going to use 0 and pi because those are the first two asymptotes of cotangent. Okay, then what you do is draw the vertical asymptotes that you just found the location of, divide the interval into four equal parts, and then you can use the negative one and the positive one to put your quarter marks in. If it's tangent, it'll be high on the right, low on the left. If it's cotangent, it'll be high on the left, low on the right and then join the points using a smooth curve just like we saw in the previous slides. Okay, let's start here by looking at y equals tangent of 2x and we notice that a is 1. Okay, now a doesn't give us amplitude anymore but it does give us vertical stretch or shrink so a is 1, there won't be any vertical stretch or shrink here. b is 2 and that means period is pi over 2. Remember, it's pi over b now. So pi over 2. And let's get the location of our first two asymptotes. This is a tangent function. So the, the asymptotes would have naturally occurred at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So I'll just write it one time. I'll write 2x equals either positive or negative pi over 2. Divide both sides by 2. And now I see that I need to have asymptotes at positive and negative pi over 4. Okay, so like that. And now the tangent pattern is high on the right, low on the left. So I've gone ahead and put in my y-axis and my quarter marks. High on the right, low on the left, and now join together with that smooth curve just like that. And if you need to grab a second period, then what you're going to do is take the pi over 4, add a period to that. That'll give you your next asymptote. So pi over 4 plus pi over 2 is going to be uh, pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 4. We'll put that here. Then we need a center mark and two quarter marks. Now, if this is 1 pi over 4 and this is 3 pi over 4, and then right in the center is going to be 2 pi over 4, so that's pi over 2. And then the dots are high on the right, low on the left, and connect, and there's your second period. And you could do that all day. You could add another uh, pi over 2 and get you another period if you needed to, as many as you need. All right, now let's look at how to graph y equals negative 3 tangent of 1 half x. Um, so the first thing we notice is that a is negative 3. And the negative means that we're going to have a reflection over the x-axis. And the 3 means that we're going to have a vertical stretching of the graph. And now we also note that b is 1 half. So period, you know, is pi over b in this case pi over one half but to divide by one half means to multiply by two and so period is two pi okay now we need to find the location of our asymptotes so this was a tangent function and the ten the asymptotes would have normally occurred at negative and positive pi over two so that means that bx is going to be equal to positive or negative pi over two always take what's in parentheses set it equal to the location of your untransformed asymptotes and in this case to isolate the x we'll have to multiply both sides by 2 and we find out that we have asymptotes at positive and negative pi so I'm going to come down here and put asymptotes at negative pi and positive pi and the axis itself becomes a center our center mark and then I have uh, quarter marks here. Now if this is 1 pi and this is 0 then halfway in between is positive pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 and these are our quarter marks. Now 
we have a tangent function, so we know normally that's high on the right, low on the left, and the high means 1 and the low means negative 1. But in this case, our a is negative 3, so the, there's a vertical flip or a reflection over the x-axis, or in other words, all of our tangent values are being multiplied by negative 3. Well, that's going to change all of their signs. So where we used to have high on the right, we're now going to have uh, low on the right and high on the left. And everything's been multiplied by 3. So I've labeled my y-axis down to negative 3 up to positive 3. And at the left quarter mark, I'm going to have a mark at positive 3. And at the right quarter mark, I'm going to have a mark at negative 3. So notice it's stretched up to 3, and it's reflected over the x-axis. In other words, it's upside down. And now I'm going to connect the dots. And you almost could believe that it's a cotangent function, but you know that it's not because there's no phase shift and yet we're going through the origin. So this is still a tangent function. It's just been reflected over the x-axis. And now let's do another period. So if I'm at pi and I go out another period, that'll put me um, 1 pi plus 2 pi is, of course, 3 pi. And so there's my next asymptote. Right in the center is the center mark. That'll be 2 pi. And we'll have quarter marks here and here. And again, the, it's high on the left, low on the right. And the high is 3, and the low is negative 3. And now connect the dots. And there you go. Okay, let's graph y equals 1 half cotangent 2x. And here we see that uh, a is 1 half. And so that's going to mean a vertical shrink. And b is 2. So period is pi over 2, just simply pi over b. And let's go ahead and calculate our asymptotes. Now, for cotangent, the asymptotes would have normally been at 0 and pi. So we'll write two equations, one where bx is equal to 0 and one where bx is equal to pi. And so if 2x equals 0, that means our first asymptote is still at 0. If 2x equals pi, that means our next asymptote is at pi over 2. So my y-axis is an asymptote. I don't think you can probably see that uh, dotted line, but it's there. All right, now put your center mark and put your two quarter marks. And remember that cotangent is high on the left, low on the right. Um, and we have a vertical shrink here, so our high mark is going to go at one half, and our low mark is going to go at negative one half, and then we'll connect the dots like that. And let's go ahead and do an additional period. So uh, if we're at pi over two and we add a pi over two, that's going to put us at pi. And so we'll have a, a center mark right in between the pi over 2 and the pi. And then a, repeat the pattern. 1 half on the left, negative 1 half on the right, and connect with that smooth curve. Okay, our next graph is y equals negative cotangent of x minus pi over 4. So notice, now we do have an a, and it's negative 1. And so we do have a reflection across the x-axis. Um, our b is 1. The, co the coefficient of the x term is 1. So b is 1, and that means that uh, period is pi over 1, or just pi. And we do have a phase shift here. Now, because of this minus pi over 4, You can probably remember from when we did sines and cosines that this means that the phase shift is going to be pi over 4 to the right. And so when we find our asymptotes here, we'll see that they're shifted over a little bit. The cotangent asymptotes would have been naturally at 0 and pi. So what we'll do is we'll write what's inside the parentheses equal to 0 and what's inside the parentheses equal to pi. 
And if you have x minus pi over 4 equals pi, and you add pi over 4 to both sides, you'll have pi over 4 plus pi. And if you get a common denominator, that's going to be equal to 5 pi over 4. Okay, so our first two asymptotes will be at pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So about right here. And then go, if this is a fourth of a pi, then you've got to go out four of those. And so there's 5 pi over 4. Now, we should put a center mark and two quarter marks on both sides. Now, it just so happens if this is 1 pi over 4 and this is 5 pi over 4, right in the center will be 3 pi over 4. And then we have these quarter marks. Okay, now normally, you know, cotangent is high on the left and low on the right, but this one has been reflected over the y-axis. So, instead of high on the left and low on the right, it's just the other way around. It's high on the right, low on the left. And connect the dots with that smooth curve. Let's do one more period. If we're at 5 pi over 4 and we add a period, then we're adding pi and pi is equal to 4 pi over 4. So 5 pi over 4 plus 4 pi over 4 is going to put us at 9 pi over 4 here. And then right in the center, that's going to be 7 pi over 4. I just know that 7 is halfway between 5 and 9. And then I know it's going to follow the same pattern as before. So high on the right and low on the left. And now connect. Okay, here we have y equals tangent of 2x minus pi. And let's see, we can see that a is 1. So there'll be no vertical stretch or shrink, and there'll be no uh, reflection over the x-axis. We can see that b is 2. So now there is going to be a change in the period. Period is going to be pi over 2. And we can tell that this is going to be a phase shift. So if you set 2x minus pi equal to 0, um, you know, when you solve that, you can see that the phase shift is going to be pi over 2 to the right. Okay, now this is a tangent function. So the asymptotes would have naturally been at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So I've written two different equations this time because um, it'll be easier to have it in two separate pieces uh, because of our phase shift here. So to solve this for x, I'm going to add pi to both sides. And so negative pi over 2 plus pi is positive pi over 2. And now divide both sides by 4. And our first asymptote will be at pi over 4. And now do the second equation to get the second asymptote. We're going to add pi to both sides. And that way uh, 2x will be pi over, uh, 3 pi over 2. And divide both sides by 2. And our second asymptote occurs at 3 pi over 4. Okay, so here's our first asymptote at pi over 4, and here's our next asymptote at 3 pi over 4. Put a mark in the middle, put a mark, a quarter mark on both sides, and now as, uh, our a is 1, so we need our vertical axis labeled positive 1 and negative 1. This is tangent, so it's going to be high on the right and low on the left. And now connect the dots, going right through the center. And let's go ahead and add another period like we always do. So we'll start at 3 pi over 4. We'll add a period. And that will give us 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 4, which is going to end up being 5 pi over 4. Put a mark right in the center. Quarter marks on both sides, high on the right, low on the left and then connect the dots. And we could even, if we wanted to, uh, add another period back here. If you want to add a period to the left of your first one, just take the first asymptote and subtract a period. Like here, I'm taking the pi over 4 and I'm subtracting a period. So pi over 4 minus pi over 2 is going to be minus pi over 4 or negative pi over 4. So I'll have an asymptote about right here. And same pattern, high on the right, low on the left, and connect the dots. So you can go either direction that you need to go. 
for our last few examples, we will take a look at a graph and see if we can come up with the equation for each graph. Now the instructions say determine the simplest form of an equation for each graph, choose b greater than zero, and include no phase shifts. It's very important that they tell us there's no phase shifts because if there were phase shifts allowed, we would not be able to tell if this is supposed to be an upside down tangent function because it's going through the origin or if it's supposed to be a phase shifted cotangent function. So now that we know that there's no phase shifts that we have to consider, we know that this is a tangent function. And since it's high on the left and low on the right, I know it's upside down. Okay, let's start by looking at the period. How far is it from the first asymptote to the next asymptote? Well, it's pi over two from the asymptote to the axis and then another pi, pi over 2 from the axis to the asymptote. So a total of 1 pi. Period is pi. And now, since period is pi, that means b equals 1. Remember before, whenever b was 1, period was pi? Well, it works the other way, too. If period is pi, b is 1. And it's going through the origin, so we know it's a tangent function. And... Since it's upside down, it's got, you know, it's got the pattern backwards. We know it's been reflected over the x-axis, so we know a needs to be negative. And you can look here and see that a is supposed to be 2. So since it's negative, we'll say negative 2. And then the graph of the, the equation a tangent bx becomes negative 2 tangent 1x. Okay, let's try this one now. Notice that we have asymptotes at 0 and pi. It couldn't possibly be phase shifted because they told us not to do any phase shifts. So I know this is not a tangent function. I know it's a cotangent function, but it's upside down. Um, so let's see. Period seems to be pi, and that means b is 1. The axis is an asymptote, and... That means that this is a cotangent function. It's upside down, so it's reflected. And notice that A, again, is 2, but it's upside down, so it needs to be negative 2. And so here we have negative 2 cotangent X. Okay, for this next graph, um, I notice that the axis is an asymptote. So again, this is a, another cotangent graph. I notice that the period is pi over 3. And since period is pi over 3, um, and I know period is equal to pi over b, if period equals pi over b, then notice that 3 and b have to be the same number. So b is 3. And a seems to be 1, and it's not even negative 1, because this is, this is the way the cotangent is supposed to go, high on the left, low on the right. So A is 1, and Y equals cotangent 3X. And then let's try this last one here. Now this one is going through the origin, so I know this is a tangent function, and the period you're, you might be tempted to say the period is pi over 6, but remember, we're starting in the middle now, so you need to go from asymptote to asymptote. So from negative pi over 6 to positive pi over 6, the period is actually 2 pi over 6, or you could say pi over 3. And since period is pi over 3 and period is equal to pi over b, again, we see that b equals 3. And... We see that, oops, we see that A equals 1. It's not been reflected. It's a tangent in its proper orientation. So A is 1. And so this function is Y equals 1 tangent 3X. So I hope you'll practice a little bit with the tangent function. It seems a little uh, hairy and tricky at first, but if you'll just practice a little bit and think about it, um, I think it'll come pretty easy to you, especially if you got really good at graphing sines and cosines in the last section. So good luck.